All right, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rechakudash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us this truth. <clears throat> and as always, I'm going to give much peace, love, and salutation to the elect scattered across the four corners of the earth that's pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. To the 144,000 prophets who Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is ordained to teach this word to you all and say Shalom. As well as to the large multitude that believes upon our testimony who the Lord's going to have mercy on in these last days. To you all, I say Shalom as well. Uh, I'm the brother Tazama from the Great Millstone Dallas Camp. Coming back with another quick lesson. And Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. And uh, I'm just going to do a response video to Elder Apostle Tahar's lesson that he did entitled, The Nephilim Are Really Demons Roaming the Earth. And, um, you know... <laughs> GOCC man is probably out of out of the Israelite camps. I mean, you know they have some pretty uh, bugged out doctrines. Okay, they have some pretty they have some pretty bugged out doctrines. For example, um, you know, marmaids are in the Bible. You know that madness. You know, marmaids is in the Bible. A four 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 call Halei Halabashim Al Shai. Marmaids are in the Bible. Um, you know, Edomites. Uh, can uh, Edomites can be uh, can make it, you know, to the kingdom, you know, and now, you know, you have this doctrine going out, which they've probably been teaching it for a while now, you know, but the spirit is revealing it that Nef the Nephilim, all right, the Nephilim, as as people call them, all right, which goes back to the Hebrew word Napoleon, which means to fall, which we're going to get all this here in a minute. All right, but now the Nephilim are demons, and 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 this is the doctrine that these dudes, that these guys teach, and they got a lot of you know they got a lot of women, you know, in their congregation that, you know, they see the they see the white head wraps and the white shirts and you know the the uh, you know the glorious uh, illustrious Passovers that they have and all this other kind of stuff, and the doctrines that they teach are completely not in line with the scriptures. You know, like, like Elder Apostle Tahar said on the comment, if you don't know how to break it down, just make it up as you go along, which you have individuals like Tazariak from the ISUPK uh, completely butchered. All right, Revelation, the ninth chapter, not breaking down that scripture, not breaking down that chapter at all, talking about poisonous locusts are going to be coming, stinging people to death and, you know, all this madness, man. You know, and these guys just just go up, just making up breakdowns as they go along. When Yahweh Bashem Shai has, you know, told us that you know a teacher must be apt to teach, and you know, also the scripture says that uh, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, being able to break down these prophecies correctly. Which us here at Great Millstone, we you know started with our apostles and elders on down. You know, that's something that we uh, that we uh, harp on. You know, it's prophecy, which one of the main prophecies that we're looking for is the uh, mandatory, um, the mandatory implementation of the uh, MOTB. OK. Now, uh, without further ado, what I want to do. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at some of these comments, man. You know, and these dudes are bugged out, man. Bubble eyes, as they say. OK. But yeah, what I want to do is uh, play this uh, clip. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to get some scriptures to actually break this down the correct way. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Make sure this is turned up. Be short. People are on a suicidal trajectory. And they don't care who died. Yeah, you decided and they call him bubble eyes. But, you know, hey, you know, we, the, you know, hey, I, I don't know the man personally. You know, I just grew up in the truth knowing him as Bubble Eyes. <laughs> but uh, I know his 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 name is Elder Racha of the GOCC. OK, so, yeah, I just wanted to just say that, you know. Consciously to walk away from him. Uh, Genesis 6 and 4. Let's start it. There were giants of me. Oh, OK, I need you to go now. Listen to this madness. Good, man. Uh, this is Genesis 6 and 4, as a man said. Deuteronomy 
matter of fact, finish reading that. There were giants in the earth in that day. Yes, sir. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare to them children, and the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Men of renown, giants, Nephilim. Folks, these are not people. There was no place in the earth for these particular beings. There was no place in the earth. There was, so now he's just pulling some shit. Now he's just pulling some stuff out his ass. There was no place on the earth for these particular beings. What is this? What is this guy talking about? So once they died, all once they died. Once they died. So once these beings died, <laughs> right? The spirits must roam in the earth before judgment. The spirits must roam in the earth before judgment. Now, hold on a second. Does not the scripture say that uh that the spirit Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. All right, does it not the scripture say that uh the spirit returneth uh return Yep, here it is, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. So, it's Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Talking about our bodies. When we die, all right, our bodies go to the grave. All right, you get buried, you know, you put in a casket, whatever the case may be. Now, in the ancient world, you know, you would, you know, you go into the sepulcher, you would pretty much go back to the earth, right? So it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, right? And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. So the spirit of that individual, right? Anybody, not whether you righteous or whether you wicked, like it tells you in Job the third chapter. Okay, your spirit returns back to the heavenly father. So what is this guy talking about? Now he's just adding to the scriptures. And I, I want to say that these dudes believe in the, uh, the book of Enoch, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. You know, hey, if, I, if I'm wrong, Salakia. But I want to say that they believe in the book of Enoch as well, too. Let's go back. Let's rewind it. We're going to rewind it 10 seconds back. These particular beings. So once they die at all, once they die, their spirits must roam in the earth before judgment. Making it up. Their spirits must roam the earth before judgment. When we just clearly read that the spirits return back to the heavenly father who gave it. And what are those spirits today? What do we call those spirits? Demons. So now those are demons. So now the Nephilim are demons. And he's just clearly just he's just clearly just making shit up. I'm talking about clearly just 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 making stuff up as he goes. Just just talking. Does the word Napoleon or as they say Nephilim but Napoleon does it break down to the word demon? Let's let's go into this real quick here and break this down the right way. Okay. Matter of fact, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is uh, pull the pull the scripture out here because this is some this is some you know uh, Christianity dogma. At the end of the day, you know, the, like like, like uh, Dabu Seven, the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki, they're among us, the reptilians, all these all these different bugged out ass breakdowns. That's why hey, the GOCC is bugged the hell out, man. Okay, they are. And it's just true. Okay, this is Second Peter chapter uh in the wrong chapter. Second Peter chapter one verse uh sixteen. We're gonna open up with this one. It says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Now this is this is a cunningly devised fable that what this man uh Raka of the GOCC is teaching. Now let's get a couple words here. All right, this word uh, uh cunningly devised is sofizo. Okay, which uh, it kind of reminds me of Sophia, but hey, you know, sofizo. And that word cuttingly, it says to invent. See, they he just invented this. This he just invented this breakdown. 
the spirits are roaming. They don't go back. They, they didn't. They're just roaming the earth before judgment. And these spirits are really actually just they're right. They're just actually demons. And no, that's not that's not true. Right. So it says to invent. It does not the scripture say in Ecclesiastes seven and the last verse that uh, uh the Lord the Lord Yahweh Bashem Al Shai made uh <clears throat> he made men. So the scripture says that he made man to be upright, but he sought out many inventions. You know, all these different inventions and, 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 and things that they teach, man, it's just bugged out, right? It says, play the sophist. What is, what is, what is a sophist? A sophist, it says in the dictionary, this is in the uh, Oxford dictionary, it says, a paid teacher of philosophy and rhetoric in ancient Greece. A paid teacher of philosophy and rhetoric in ancient Greece, right? Associated in popular thought with moral skepticism and suspicious, suspicious, excuse me, reasoning. See, and this is a suspicious reasoning, man. Hence the reason the spirit had Elder Apostle Tahar, you know, Watching the video and he, and, he, and, he pulled, and he brought it out it says play the sophist To devise cleverly or cunningly You see this is a cleverly And a cunningly devised Fable Okay and that word fables is Mutas Okay Mutas Which that word fable says a fiction A fable universally an invention Falsehood The fictions of the Jewish The uh Theos theosophist and Gnostics, especially concerning the uh, emanations and orders of the eons, are also called fables. And you know, a fable is just like a, a, a like as they say, an old wives' tale. This is nothing more than just a tale. The Nephilim or spirits that are you know set for judgment, and they just roam in the earth. Complete madness, man. It says, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, but were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. See, so at the end of the day, you know, you, the Apostle Peter was setting, was setting the record straight. Like, man, look, we ain't sitting here making up fables, you know, and, and just in just tales, you know, of when we made known the coming of the Lord unto you, man, because they were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. You know, they were eyewitnesses of the things that Yahweh Shai was doing. Okay, now. Let's go from here, and we're gonna jump to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. All right, and uh, <clears throat> let's start at verse one. It says, "And it came to and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them." Now, mind you, these are daughters of all nations of people at, in, in the world at this time, because it says, "What men began to multiply." And you had a specific seed line on the planet Earth known as the sons of God, okay? Which came through, through the lineage of Adam, okay? Abel was slew, and then Seth, and so on and so forth, as you, as you read down the line, okay? So it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the Earth, and daughters were born unto them, daughters were born unto them, right? That the sons of God, who are the sons of God here? I might, matter of fact, that's my question to 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 the GOCC. When it says the sons of God here, who is who is this talking about? According to your logic, if these were demons, all right, if these were demons that were roaming the face of the earth and all this other kind of madness, as you say. So you must so you must believe that angels have sex. When the, when the scriptures clearly say that they don't. That's what you, you, I mean, you must believe in that if that's the case. So who are the sons of God here? Are these angels that were in the heavens that, that rebelled against the heavenly father and ended up sleeping, you know, with women on the planet earth? It says the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. You know, they were, they were looking good. They were fine, right? And they took them wives of all which they chose. See, they, they took them wives. They began to marry these uh, these women. 
and what comes when you uh you marry these women you know you because you can have you know a concubines of the heathen of the heathen nations that are around about but when you when you marry them okay as the scriptures tell us not to you know we're not to mingle with the heathen but when you marry them what what begins to happen you begin to follow after their their customs and serve uh, uh their gods if you will okay which the scriptures talk about how the uh pretty much the creation of idols out of fact let me see if i can find it i know it's in the uh, wisdom of solace I know uh, idols is a very, very broad, broad word, but here we go. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 27 says, For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the beginning, let's read that again, the beginning, right? The cause, so it's the, it's, it's, it's the first, right? The cause, you have a cause and you have, an, and from a cause you have an effect of something, you know? If you if you drive in a car and you and you and the cause is that you run a red light, the effect could be that what you can get into a car accident. So it says it's the beginning, the cause, right, and the end of all evil, bad times, destruction, disaster. Okay, it says for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Right now, let's go back. Okay, verse 3. And Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Okay? Going into you know going into the you know uh, the prophecies that Noah was uh, preaching while he was building the ark, right? Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Now, if somebody would read that, it would think that this is talking about you know, mighty, you know, 25, 30, 35 foot men walking around, walking around the planet Earth, picking up, you know, uprooting trees with their hands and holding on their shoulders, you know, walking around with a big ass axe, fee, five, four, four, right? These, these giants, but let's, let's get the Hebrew word here. Now there's a Hebrew word here is Napayal. You got na pa ya la. So na pa ya. Okay? Na pa ya. It says giants. The Nephilim. This is where you get the word Nephilim from. So you hear you hear people talk about the Nephilim as uh the GOC or the GOCC are calling them demons. Right? That's what they're calling them. De these, these were demons on the planet Earth, as they're saying. But the word here is just giants. Right? Now, when you go to the root of that word, which is important to go to the root of something, that's where you get the, the, the source. That word Nephilim goes back to that word, or Napoleon goes back to the word what? Napal, Napala, Napal, right? Which means what? To fall, lie, be cast down, fail, right? How did the sons of God failed because through the worshiping of idols brought forth destruction okay adam in the garden you know i'd rather say eve first because the scripture says that eve was first in the transgression okay but eve sinned in the garden by what following after the philosophies and customs of what the serpent or that diviner gave unto eve and what did Adam do? Adam followed after his wife, after his woman, followed after his wife in this sense and followed after those customs that was told unto him. And what happened? Death hath reigned in the earth since then. The sons of God have been steadily declining. Now we're to a point where we're at the weakest state that we've ever been to, but the Lord is raising us back up, right? Through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bahashem in the name of Yahweh Shai, right? Not a higher Yashar, Ashar Yashaya, by the way. So it says to fall, lie, lie, be cast down, fail. To fall, to fall, a violent death. To fall, prostrate, prostrate oneself before. To fall upon. To fall short. 
Have not the Israelites fallen short from the glory? As the scripture says, all have fallen short from the glory of the Lord. Fail, fall out, turn out, result. What is the result of us following after idols? The result is that what? The death reigns in the earth. The wages of sin is death. We, 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 we become weaker. The stature of us have to, has steadily declined. To settle, waste away, <laughs> be offered, be inferior to. Does not the scriptures call us a degenerate plant in Jeremiah? Okay? That's what that word giants here mean. That's what that's it's not talking about no demons that, that are roaming the planet Earth and waiting for the day of judgment. And they just and they and it's the spirits roaming the earth just tormenting people. That's that's a fable. And we're breaking it down here. We're clearly showing you what these words mean. So it says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And after, and also after that, when the sons of God, the Israelites, okay, that's what Yashua means. He is a prince of the power. He, prince power. What is a prince? A son of a king. The sons of God. So it says, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they had sex with the daughters of the heathen with the, with these different women they came in unto the sons of men and they bear them children and they bear children to them right these children cuz what does not the seed reckon with the man yes the seed the seed of that child or excuse me the seed of that man determines that child so these were still Israelites it, at, at this time. There wasn't co quote unquote called Israelites. So I want to be I want to be technical. There wasn't called Israelites at this time. They were called the it was the sons of God. That's what they were known of. Okay, because Israel, the Israelites came after Jacob was name changed after uh, change to Israel, and they bear them and they bear children to them, and the same became the same became mighty men which were of old. Let's get a couple words here. So these children that the sons of God had with the with the daughters of men became mighty men, right? Mighty men. That word mighty is gabawar. Okay, gabawar, which says strong, valiant men, strong and valiant. Why? Because this is still the seed. This is still the seed of the Most High. At the end of the day. When I say see the most, I'm talking about the sons of God. And, and mind you, we were in our stronger estate back then. Right? They became mighty men. And the reason why they were mighty, because they were still they were still the sons of God, right? Which were of old. That word old is I Walum. I Walum. The ancient. Okay? The ancient. Ancient time. Right? The same became mighty men which were which were uh which were of old. Right? Men of renown. Let me get over, bro. Men of renown. So we're renowned. Shum. What 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 is shum? Name. What comes with a name is, is fame. Was not Shem one of the sons of God? That's what that word name, or excuse me, a uh, renown means name. Okay. <coughs> excuse me. Slocky. Fame. You see that fame? Glory. Okay. Men of renown that had, had names for themselves. Why? Because they were the sons of God. Okay? That's all that that's all that, that means. Now, when you get Psalm 82, okay, verse 6 and 7, it says, I have said, ye are gods. Now, who, now who is this? Is this a psalm of uh, Asaph, right? Now, wh what is Asaph saying here? He says, I have said, right, ye are gods. God literally just means power. We are gods, okay? We are the sons of God. Which makes us gods, right? And that word, God, like I said, God is power. Like in the beginning, Alahayim, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The powers created the heavens and the earth, right? It says, "I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the ch are children of the Most High." 
right? Sons of God, right? But ye shall die like men, all right? The wages of sin is death, right? Ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. What does this word fall mean in the Hebrew? What do you know? It's the same word here for Nephilim. Nepal. Same exact, the same exact uh, uh, word. Okay, the only difference is, that is this is the actual root. Because you got giants, which is plural, and you got Nepal yum. Yum at the end of a word makes it plural. Okay, but when you read the word for face value in the English, you could have, you, you know, you're thinking of, like I said, the jolly green giant walking around with a damn you know uprooting trees and walking around with a tree on his damn shoulder when it's not the case it says but ye shall die like men talking about the sons of god we will die like men and fall like one of the princes what causes the fall the serving of idols okay this is psalm 49 and 12 actually no you know what? I want to get a um, actually want to get a better one. Actually, this one's going to actually be in Wisdom of Solomon. Actually, <clears throat> this is Wisdom of Solomon. What the fuck this dude doing? This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen, uh, verse. I'm gonna start at verse one, but I'm gonna read kind of quickly. It says again, one preparing himself to sail. Right talking about you know selling in a boat one one propelling one preparing himself to sail and about to pass through the raging waves calleth upon a piece of wood more rotten than the vessel that carrieth him going into the uh the, the devising going into the uh the devising and the uh the making of idols okay because people worship wood stone gold silver and all these different vessels right it says verse two for verily desire of gain devise that okay because you make these idols ultimately what so that those who will make it would make would make a profit right for verily uh for verily desire of gain devise that right and the workman build it by his skill but thy providence O father governeth it okay because the lord create the lord controls everything for thou has made a way in the sake of for thou has made a way in the sea and a safe path in the waves. Because ultimately it's, it's Yahweh Bashem Yahushua that governs everybody and governs everything and that guides us to our destinations, right? Showing that thou canst save from all danger, right? Yea, though a man went, yeah, though a man went to sea with thou art, right? Nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the, excuse me, nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the works of thy wisdom should be idle and therefore do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood and passing the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved think about the ark right that was made out of wood verse six for an old time also when the proud giants perished when the proud giants perished Ye shall fall like the sons of men when the proud giants perished. The hope of the world governed by thy hand escaped in a weak vessel. And how, what is that going into? Noah, Ham, Shum, and Japheth and their wives. Through them, the whole world was repopulated. It says, let's read that again. For an old time also, when the proud giants perished, when they died, when they fell, right? The hope of the world governed by thy hand escaped in a weak vessel in a, in a wooden ark and left to all ages a seed of generation okay and that seed of generation is still that righteous bloodline that righteous seed the sons of god that are still on the planet earth which today are the israelites but the key is what the proud giants perished okay this is a uh, sirach Excuse me, Sirach 16 and 7. Uh, right, let's get to the point. It says, he was not pacified toward the old giants. Right? 
who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. What was the strength of the who? How did they fall away? How did they fall away in the strength of their foolishness? By serving idols. Following after these different strange women, all right, these heathen, Jake began to go off and marrying them, okay, and began to follow after their ways. Okay, this is Baruch chapter three, verse 26. There were the there were the giants, uh, yeah, there were the giants famous from the beginning. There's an script to say that what? We just read it in Genesis 6. There were giants in the earth, men of renown. That word renown is what? Shum, which means fame or name. There were there were the giants famous from the beginning, men of old. We read that earlier too. That were of so great stature and so expert in war. Because even though the sons of God were sleeping and having children, I'd rather say, with the daughters of men and Mary and the what those those children that were coming out were still Israelites. OK, still the sons of God, which made them renowned, which made them experts, which made them famous because what they were still of that seed. They ain't talking about demons, man. OK. Let's get first Kings, the 11th chapter. We'll see what we'll see what Solomon did. OK, this is first Kings 11. And uh, yeah, we'll start at verse uh, four. For it came to pass because it talks about how he had uh, uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. Right. Verse four it says, for it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. So these wives that Solomon had that he married, he began to what? build idol or uh, build temples into their gods you know began to follow after their customs he was into child sacrifice a hey, solomon was into all of it because what he was following after his wives gods and their customs that's what happened you see which causes you to fall for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. See that? After other gods. And his heart was not perfect with Yahweh his power, as was the heart of David his father. See that? So his mind wasn't, wasn't perfect. After following these idols and these gods, what happened? He began to serve these gods. Well, what caused him to serve these different gods? Marrying the wives of the uh, having wives of the different nations. And it goes down into all the different, you know, gods that Solomon began to serve, which I'm not going to read that for the sake of time. You can read that for yourself. Right. Got two more because I, I just want to hit the points. This is Tobit chapter four. Verse 12. Right. It says, beware of all whoredom, my son. And chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. Right. And take not a strange woman to wife. What is a strange woman talking about here? A woman of the different nations, right? And take not a strange woman to wife. That's the key word is to wife. Like I said, you can have a heathen woman as a concubine, but not to wife. We were only to marry. We were only to marry the, the woman of our uh, of our elk, our Israelite women, right? says, beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers and take not a strange wife woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. That was very forbidden because what? You didn't want to do mixing and mingling of the seed, even though the seed strictly comes from the man. And that and that man is what? Whoever that whoever that man is, that's that's what the child is going to be. But when you read in particular accounts, what happened? You had particular children who are being born, who are speaking the language of, uh, matter of fact, let me get that real quick and then we'll jump back, of Ashdod. I think it's in Nehemiah. Let me see. Yep, Nehemiah 13, verse, uh, I'll start at verse 23. It says, in those days also saw I Jews, right, Israelites, right? Collectively, it's talking about the Southern Kingdom, Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. Who are the, who, who's Ashdod? 
Hamites, and Ammon, Mo, uh, a Japanese, so-called Japanese, and of Moab, right? And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. See? But according to, to the language of each people. Let's read it in NLT. Furthermore, half their children spoke the language of Ashdod or of some other people and could not speak the language of the Ju uh, language of Judah at all. See, and that was and that pissed Nehemiah off, man. You know, to the point where he cursed them out. Okay. It says, "For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob." So it starts with Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the sons of God. We are children of the prophets. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning. Even that they all marry wives of their own kindred. That's what we were supposed to do. We all marry wives according to our own nation of people and were blessed in their children. Right. And their seed shall inherit the land. OK. Last scripture. Ezra. 10 of 44. And I'll just get to the point. All these had taken strange wives. All these individuals that you see here in Ezra, the 10th chapter. When you read it. OK. Let me go down a little bit. And they were going into the transgression that they did. But the point is that what? All these had taken strange wives, strange wives. What is that word strange here? That word is Nakaraya, Nakaraya, uh, Nakaraya. Okay. Foreign, alien. You see, foreign. What happened when our people began to worship Baal Peor? What happened? We were, we were following those Midianite feet, uh, those Midianite women. See, foreign non-Israel women, right? All these had taken strange wives and some of them had wives by whom they had children. And what happened with these children? They began to fall. They began to follow the customs of the different gods, which brought transgression. Because why? We began to mix and mingle and marry, right? These different heathen nation women and began to follow after their gods, which caused us to fall. It's that simple. We ain't talking about no goddamn demons and all that madness, man. So with that, I want to say call hello Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone and taught us his truth and much peace, love, and salutation to the elect. Shalom.